Hi, this is Clark Group from V12ICPAC.com. And if you saw my uh, other video about how the OEM voltage transformers work, you might recognize my elaborate film set here. But today, this is uh, the 21st of October. And uh, officially, today, I am pleased to say we, we, V12 community, we are done with these stupid voltage transformers. So let's just get them all out of here. Just we don't need them. We don't want them. They're a bunch of crap. They get hot. They leave us stranded. Well, that's about forty thousand dollars worth of stuff. No problem, right? But what a bunch of crap. Uh, I already feel so much better. Yeah, you know, a lot of these things when I was rebuilding these, I would just throw the stuff into a box and leave it aside. Um, this is this is solder wick. This stuff comes at, uh, I buy it 25 feet on a roll, and that's about uh, two, two and a half feet of what I use for one voltage transformer to desolder the capacitors and the stuff that was on there that I had to get off. So you take this many little strands and, you know, you keep just putting them together and make a rat tail out of it. Or two, or three, or four. Done with it. The capacitors, obviously they are in that gel, that goo. And uh, I think on that other video, I took a handful. It's like two, two big ones, two of the big ones. I know it's hard to see from this distance. Four, and then two more. So basically, in the palm of your hand, you can hold one voltage transformer's worth of the high uh, capacitance capacitors. And for whatever reason, I just kept throwing them boxes, and boxes get full, and there'd be another one. I'd start all over again. So we're kind of done. Done saving this stuff too. All oh, no good. These voltage transformer was about three hours, four hours to get through. So these are all stuff to get out of them. Notice I'm smart enough not to throw them. Out of them. But we're talking. Years, literally years of time spent rebuilding these things and saving the parts. Oh, that's heavy. Flip the whole table right over. And in favor of what? In favor of this. This is the new voltage transformer that I'm going to call the Boost Box. And uh, it is everything that we want. It's off the engine. It's a nice constant display of uh, of power. It's got fuse protection and it will have green and blue LEDs to show that the power is actually on coming out of the voltage transformer. So if you've got a misfire on one of the banks and your lights are on, you know it's the pack. End of story. So this will be a great troubleshooting tool uh, for a bunch of your Mercedes shops and things that are out there. But uh, let me uh, change cameras and I'll go through a bunch of the stuff that I did trying to get this thing developed just to show you some, some background stuff that goes into it. And then uh, I'll show you quickly what it's like on the car, a couple places to put it, and then I'll do another another version of this video, but just quick to the point of what the boost box does and uh, the best place probably to mount it and, and what the expectation from you should be about its performance. So let me change cameras. We'll do some stuff here on the table. All right, so one last little show and tell here about some of these other mechanical components. So, again, the boost box label getting done and this was actually the undesirable cable and that I've been running with the prototypes we got a better cable but it's 0.7 of an inch larger and it does not fit the cable doesn't fit inside the strain relief here for the connector so nice thing about 3d printing I getting one made a little bit bigger a little bit wider but obviously these things uh, have to be able to plug in so the pigtail from the car and that's just going to plug in, so we're good there. I'm absolutely fascinated by this 3D printing process. We went through several types of material trying to find something that would give us the heat resistance that we needed, yet something that was fairly easy to work with. This is the bottom section. You can't see all the little tiny slots in it for the pins. This is one frame every 10 seconds, so this is um, 
fairly long involved process. I think it's about an hour and a half to make the bottom piece. And then this would be the top part. So this is the shroud that covers all the wire connections. And then uh, we've got the end of the post of it that does the tie wrap around the cable, acts as a strain relief so we don't pull on cable connections that are underneath the shroud. Pretty cool. And there's the top part. Boom, done. And let's see here. So while we're staring at these parts, uh, that box is sealed up, but you might recall, and if you've ever looked inside yours, we got the big capacitors. These are the biggest ones that are in the new box, and these are the next biggest ones. So because of running that frequency uh, 10 times higher, um, 200,000 cycles per second, <laughs> we don't need as large a capacitor to store stuff. And then, of course, I've gone with... Uh, two transformers instead of the four inductors. These have actually got two outputs, 180 and 23. So there's two of these guys in here. And I think a total of three of these, two of these, and there's another mid-sized one, two of those. So a total of three, seven capacitors uh, for the whole thing. So uh, back to these connectors. These have been very uh, challenging and intriguing at the same time. Um, I've got some videos here interlaced you will see uh, about these pins. So the pins have actually got thicker material here, a thinner material here by 15 thousandths of an inch. So that's all done with the tooling. And when we crimp these, you've actually got the top part of this that hits the insulation right here. And then the tool grabs the rest of this and crunches it over on top of the wire. And I can't pull these apart. I've yanked on them with pliers and, and they just, they're not, they're not coming apart. So we've got a great connection there. And then uh, this is the bottom part. So the, the, um, the connector is actually made in two halves. So the bottom half, we've got the slots and it's amazing how tight we can get with this 3D printing. But uh, we'll go in the slot here and the connector and then our little pin here that's sticking out, my finger's going to cover everything, but this little claw sticking out actually locks into those slots there. So when I get these pushed in all the way, they are fully engaged, and then they're not going to come out once you can get them in all the way. Sometimes i got to use pliers. It's pretty snug. And at 15 thousandths of an inch, i got to be careful not to bend these. There it goes. Okay, so that's going to lock in there, and we're good. So these are the pins that go in the connector. They're made out of beryllium copper, and it's pretty challenging to get the tooling done right. The pins have a 30 thousandths width, and then it tapers down to 15 thousandths. So trying to get the right thickness so you can crimp the wires, but the right thickness so that it would go into the Mercedes connector. And the tooling has got to put all the shapes and bends and uh, catching mechanism on the actual pin that will lock into the connectors that get 3D printed. So there was more to this thing than just the electronics. There was this whole other mechanical aspect of uh, getting the cable and the pins done. So this was the prototyping mechanism just to check tooling tolerances and such. And uh, I've got some other videos here of the actual production. A little, little faster. So once all the tolerances are checked out and they're okay, then you change equipment and you go to something a little faster. You can see the beryllium coppers on a sheet and the pins get punched out. That sheet. And then the last one here. I think this is the back side of the same machine. Unfortunately, I had to have all this done in China since nobody in the U.S. would touch the kind of volume that I was after. They all wanted hundreds of thousands of pins. It's like, sorry, <laughs> I can't use that many. So uh, this was done through my partnership with my coil factory over there. So let's see what this looks like. It's a whole lot faster. So the pins get dumped into the bucket, and then from here, they've still got to get... Um, 
set to uh, nickel plating so that we don't get any corrosion on the pins once they're sitting on those connectors. So a uh, little, little inside uh, story here of what it takes to get some of this stuff put together. It takes a long time and uh, in some cases getting some people annoyed at me just trying to get stuff done right. There you go. And of course top piece with the right size that will come down on top of this, get screwed in and we're good. So we've got a good solid connection on the connector where it plugs into the car's harness. We're solid inside the box. The new design is working great. And uh, the boxes, when I get them, they're plain. A fair amount of machining. We've got the two holes. And I know these look oblong, and they have to be because of the fuse holders. They've got little shaved edges, so they need to lock in so they don't twist. Um, and then the four holes for these the LED lights to plug into, they actually plug in right off the circuit board. They clip in for our red and our green LEDs. And there's seven holes. It rained a little bit while I was out test driving. So um, seven holes on the back. You've got the FETs that anchor in here and here, which are actually heat sinks. And then the board is actually mounted to the bottom of the case. Alrighty. Uh, hope the world enjoys this. It's taken um, over a year. <laughs> Close two years to get this done but it is done it seems to be working spectacularly so there you've got it okay it looks like I'm gonna get lucky with nobody out here those guys are half a mile ahead I'm gonna catch them pretty quickly here fourth third and the second let's go About. I'm gonna run out of road. Hopefully it's not a cop coming. Freak these people out. So I'll pull in up here. We'll take a look at uh, if I can get my cheapo harbor freight <laughs> temperature sensor to work right. Uh, we'll duck into here came by this morning there was a Corvette club all brand new vets about 10 of them okay let's see what we got there's a local reservoir out here we'll do a little deviation water's down say the least Okay, so this is an 05 CL65. I had been testing the uh, voltage transfer on one that I rebuilt years ago. It's still fine, so the guy's got a problem with the coil pack. On this car, this has turned out to be a great place to put the boost box. So you can see we've got the green and blue lights of so 23, 180 volts on both channels. Everything's working well. This weather stripping lifts right up. I, there's a like a U-clip here, and I'm going to make some of those and supply them. But this is a great place. So this is this has got some warmth to it. I mean, you can feel some heat, but it's not burning me up. We'll see if I can get a reading off of this. 97, 100, 102, 103 degrees. Yeah, I believe that. So that's. That's the heat being generated from the box. The heat sinks from those FETs on the back surface here. Okay, so 1 through 6, 7 through 12. Green, 23, blue, 180. No user servable parts inside. High voltage. Don't mess, please. Okay, so that can go back in there. that's a great place and even though this isn't on per se 139 just sitting there so it wasn't working it was just collecting heat and it's relatively cold out today it's like 65 degrees or something like that my windshield container broke a little while ago cleaner but there's another space that can go right in here as well Okay, very happy with the results though. And I recommend if you model 
has room. Or on the 07s, you've got uh, that area back there where your accessory battery, same thing. I'll supply a little donut thing. You can run the cable through the firewall and keep it back in there.